Hey guys, today for my throwback Thursday of my August favorites from 2014. If you guys have never seen this series from me before, I'll have my playlist linked down below. And basically, I'm going to be reviewing all the products I featured in a favorites video two years back, letting you know whether those products are still favorites or whether I have replaced them with something I prefer. My inspiration for this series was Kristen Game. I'll have her channel and her playlist linked down below. Please make sure you go check her out and give her some love. I will also be linking the original favorites video and I will list and link all the items that I'm mentioning. So first I had talked about my favorite look of the month and I had actually done this eye look today before I even looked at that video and I happened to be wearing the same thing which just ended up being perfect. The look is using some of my favorite warm tone MAC eyeshadows. I was wearing Woodwinked on the lid, soft brown as a transition color, and brown script in my crease. I am wearing that again today. I love the finishes. I love the shades. Those are really, really pigmented. They apply so nicely. I absolutely love all the finishes from MAC. There are a couple shades here and there that are duds in terms of pigmentation, but all of these I think perform so well. I absolutely love this look. It is such a stunning warm tone look that isn't too, too orangey. If you are fair and you are afraid of really warm toned looks, I absolutely love this one. I think it is stunning. So absolutely still a favorite. I love these shadows so much and I love the look that they create. The blush I was wearing in that look is Max Ripe for Love, which is a satin finish. This is part of the Temperature Rising collection from a couple summers back. This color is so stunning. This is the most perfect burnt peach. It really does just give you that most perfect sunburn look to your skin. It is so beautiful for the summertime. It is sunburn in a good way, not in a bad way. Just that really nice sunburnt peach glow on the cheeks. Love, love, love this blush. I've actually been wearing it a ton the past two weeks. So you're going to see this in this year's August favorites as well. I'm so sad this is a limited edition blush. This shade is stunning. I love MAC blushes. I love this satin formula the best. So highly, highly recommend MAC blushes in general. And this is definitely still a favorite shade of mine. And then I had the lip combo I was loving in that look. The lip liner was the NYX Retractable Lip Liner in the shade Nude. I no longer have that. I have since gotten rid of all of my NYX Retractable Lip Liners. They were nice to line my lips, but in terms of filling in my lips, they felt too thick and cakey, so I decided to get rid of all of those, and I have replaced them with the ColourPop Lippy Pencils. These are amazing. I'm wearing this combo today. This is the shade Aquarius, my favorite holy grail nude lip liner ever. This is amazing. I just lined my lips, but I recommend the ColourPop Lubby Pencils so, so much. They are perfect to line and fill in your lips. They have really fully opaque coverage. They do glide on pretty easily without being slippery. They don't tug at all. I'm so impressed by these lip liners. Highly recommend them over the NYX Retractable. And the lipstick I was wearing over top is the Too Faced La Creme Lipstick in Country Star. This was a limited edition shade. This is no longer a favorite. I like this lipstick over top of that lip liner, but on its own, I think it is atrocious. This is not a flattering peach on my skin tone. This definitely is more of a milky orange shade. It doesn't have enough pink to it on me. So depending on the makeup look, I do like it, but I don't love it. I don't recommend this shade if it's still available in some places. Do not recommend it. Also, I do not like this formula. It lasts two hours on me, which is ridiculous for a high-end lipstick. I have read several several reviews where it said that this shade had a lesser lasting power than the rest of the line, but I'm still not going to purchase any of the other shades since I've had such a bad experience with the lasting power on this one. So this lipstick is no longer a favorite for the shade and for the formula. Here is a swatch of the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in Aquarius, and here is the Too Faced La Creme Lipstick in Country Star. My next favorite was a complexion combination. I was using the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus Foundation in the shade number 20, and I was applying it with the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge, and then I was going over top of it with my NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation in the shade number one Ivory. I'm currently out of that one, and I have the shade number two Nude, which works for me in the summer and if my foundation is too light. 
but that was the combo that I was wearing so I have since used up that foundation it did give really nice medium buildable coverage it wasn't the perfect shade for me it was a little too beigey and I would prefer it to be a little more yellow but it did work for me pretty well that is a nice foundation it did have good coverage it held up against my oil okay but as much as oily skin people rave about it I don't think it did anything miraculous for my oily skin I definitely would not repurchase it I much prefer my Estee Lauder double wear as a high-end foundation over the makeup forever so it was good but it wasn't great it is very expensive and if I had to choose a high-end foundation I would choose the Estee Lauder double wear instead I do absolutely love this sponge I use this to apply my under eye concealer and I do use this to apply foundation depending on the foundation some foundations I prefer with a brush but a lot of them I prefer with the sponge I think the shape is perfect I use this flat side for foundation and the pointed side for concealer and under eye setting powder amazing such a great product for a very inexpensive price highly recommend this if you haven't tried it yet and the next stay matte but not flat powder has been a holy grail of mine for years ivory is the perfect fair shade with a yellow undertone these can be a little bit pricey but i always stock up on these when nyx has their 40 percent off black friday cyber monday sale absolutely a holy grail powder gives really nice coverage and it helps me stay matte without looking cakey i use this as a setting powder even though it is a powder foundation so highly highly recommend this for anyone with combo oily skin that likes some extra coverage next i have three MAC blush favorites. The first was a mineralized blush in the shade Petal Power. I have since decluttered that and I plan on selling it. It is a beautiful color, but it is NARS Orgasm. I have so many dupes of NARS Orgasm. I didn't need that one. I love the mineralized blush formula. I think they are really pigmented, but they don't look chalky on the skin. They have a nice glow to them. Warm Soul is one of my holy grail blushes. So the mineralized blush formula is nice. That color is pretty, but I just had way too many blushes that were that shade so for that reason it is not a favorite anymore but it has been added to the permanent line and if you don't own any blush like NARS orgasm then I would recommend it my other two Mac blush favorites were the first Mac blushes I had ever used that would be the shade Melba and Fleur Power Melba is a matte and Fleur Power is a satin Melba is a really pretty neutral peach with a little bit of pink tones to it and Fleur Power is a gorgeous pinky coral shade I love these so so much in the summertime and I also love wearing this one in the fall Melba goes well with so many different looks because even though it is more warm tone it isn't too too warm like right for love so this is definitely a really wearable blush I love both of these these are highly 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 pigmented so you do need to be careful when applying them have you guys experienced this in my opinion I feel like the MAC eyeshadows and blushes in the pan are a lot more pigmented pigmented and soft than the ones in the pot. I feel like the ones in the pot are just a little bit stiffer and harder to pick up product. Let me know your experience. Maybe that's just in my head, but I love MAC blushes so much. If I could only own one brand of blush, I would choose MAC. They have a lot of different finishes and a lot of different shades to choose from for any skin tone. I love these two blushes so much. These are definitely holy grail blush shades to me. Here is a swatch of MAC Melba and here is a swatch of MAC Fleur Power. Next, I had a mascara combination using the Mary Kay Lash Love Mascara and the Remo Lash Accelerator Mascara. I have since used those up and I have not repurchased them since. I've tried the Mary Kay Lash Love and Lash Love Lengthening. Was really impressed with both of them. They are plastic bristle brushes that give me really nice length and separation and a little bit of curl. I love both of those mascaras. I do highly recommend them. I think that they were really impressive. I did not expect much out of them, but was was really really impressed so those are nice but I would not consider them a favorite because I haven't repurchased them then the other mascara is the Rimmel Lash Accelerator which gives amazing amazing volume and thickness and really nice black lashes that also gives some nice length separation that mascara really does everything for me I absolutely love it it is a little bit pricey and I haven't repurchased it in a while because I have a million mascara samples I'm trying to work through but I definitely plan on repurchasing seen the Rimmel I'm very very impressed with it I love what it does for my lashes I know a lot of people love it for the lower lashes it is great for that because it has a really really tiny brush it is a natural bristle brush and a wet mascara formula which I love I know some people don't like that but that is really what I prefer so I would absolutely still consider that mascara a favorite even though I haven't purchased it in a while 
I will repurchase it and I do highly recommend it. Next I had a few more lipstick favorites. These are the MAC Sheen Supreme lipsticks and I have three different shades that were part of a limited edition collection so these are no longer available but you might be able to find them at a CCO. Also recently the Sheen Supreme lipsticks have been discontinued as a whole which is so depressing for me because these were my all-time favorite MAC lipsticks. I've tried several finishes of their traditional lipsticks and I don't like them. For whatever reason they don't work for me but the Sheen Supremes are amazing. I am still able to find them on Bloomingdale's all of the permanent shades so I'll have that link down below for you guys. These lipsticks do retail for $20. I love these because they are medium to full opacity. They have a nice glossy finish which makes my lips look really really full which I love and these also have a pretty good lasting power. They remind me of a Revlon lip butter except more more pigmented and longer lasting, which I love. So highly, highly recommend these if you can find them at a CCO or if you want to get them on Bloomingdale's. But these three shades I have are limited edition. I have the shades Lust Extract, Phosphorescent, and Pheromenal. Here is a swatch of Lust Extract. Here is a swatch of Phosphorescent. Here is a swatch of Pheromenal. Lastly, I have three polish favorites that were game changers for me. I had been looking for my perfect peach and coral for so long, but all of them were either too pink, too orange, not the perfect mixture of shades, but I was able to find my must-have peach, coral, and my new holy grail top coat in this favorites video, and I do still love all of them. I recommend them all. Holy grails, all of them. I'll give you the details. My favorite peach is this Formula X polish in the shade Alive. This does take three coats to be opaque, which I do tend to expect with pastel polishes. This is the perfect mixture of peach and pink. It does not pull too orange. I love this shade so much. It is a really nice formula, beautiful color. It does take three coats, like I said, and I do need to be careful in applying it that I don't have any bald spots, but because I love this color so much, I'm willing to work with that formula. My favorite coral is Zoya's Wind. This is the most perfect pink coral opaque in two coats. I love Zoya polishes so, so much. All of their colors and their formulas are absolutely amazing. This is a must have for me. Highly, highly recommend this shade. My favorite top coat is the Glisten and Glow HK Girl Top Coat, which is something you can only buy online. I have used up an entire bottle and I have moved on to my second. This is amazing. This really dries very quickly and makes your nails really glossy. I love that. I've tried other top coats in the past that just don't dry quick enough for me, but this one is absolutely amazing. I use this with every single manicure. Highly, highly recommend this. So guys, that was my throwback Thursday of my August favorites from 2014. I would love to know your thoughts if you tried out any of these products. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.